Before I get started, I do consulting on where you can move. I'll work with you to find the perfect place for you to move to. There's more information at the end of the video about that. Now let's get started. Santa Barbara is known as the American Riviera thanks to its Spanish colonial revival architecture, rich heritage, world-renowned foods and wine scene, stunning natural beauty, and near-perfect weather. Just wow. That's impressive. Good for whoever wrote that. I guess you could call this place all those things. And that's why I'm here on day five of the big old California adventure. It had been 15 years since I had last been to Santa Barbara, and I wanted you to see it too. A lot of my trips so far had been about the weird and the tragic, but not here. This is a happy place, for the most part. As we'll see, sadly, it's not as nice as it once was. California has a way of infecting itself on everything, and that's just sad, damn it. There's certain days when you really enjoy your job. The day before in Los Angeles was enough to make me resent my career. That was terrible. But not today. Today was different. It was one of a few afternoons on my 18-day Cali adventure that I truly enjoyed. For those of you who have never been to Santa Barbara before, you're in for a treat. Central California might have the coolest coast in the country. In areas like this, everybody is all ooh and ah about everything. Justifiably so. I mean, look at the place. But it takes a lot of money to live here. And the way things are going, most of us regular folks won't be able to afford it one day. So where are we anyways? Santa Barbara's here. It's about 100 miles from downtown Los Angeles. It's kind of the first big stop you come to when you begin to head north up the California coast. This was kind of a small, sleepy beach town in the 60s and 70s. Mostly working class people mixed in with hippies and surfers. It was very local and neighborly. Then the hippies got some money, and now they're not hippies anymore. When Reagan became president and bought a ranch up here, that really put Santa Barbara on the map, and it became a tourist destination. Today, the population is around 90,000 people. It's almost the exact same population here as it was 30 years ago. We'll talk about why in a minute. But the weather here is amazing, like 80 degrees all year and bright and sunny. Right now, we're in downtown Santa Barbara. It's very clean and safe, somewhat upscale, with lots of places to shop, eat, and hang out. But it might be too upscale these days. Something that's irritating regular folks who grew up here. It's very liberal here. No surprise there. Two-thirds of folks are registered Democrats. The mayor is a Democrat. About 10 years ago, conservatives were on the rise in Santa Barbara, but not anymore. Besides hanging out downtown, there's clearly hiking and surfing around every corner. And it's very quiet here. So you can have a little bit of a Groundhog Day feeling where every day feels the same. A quick dip in the ocean, a coffee downtown, maybe a little Mexican food. I'd imagine if you were stressed out in life, moving here would soothe that away. It's very laid back for those who can afford this lifestyle. And the tourists seem to love it here. They come to look at all the homes and shop and walk around on all the clean streets, just like this one. Now, there are many, many, many elite neighborhoods that I could show you. Most of the super amazing homes are up on the hillsides north of town. We're going to begin there. Here's what that looks like. You may not know it, but it's 30% more expensive here than New York City. Wow. The average cost of a home in Santa Barbara is 1.8 million bucks, people. So clearly, you can't afford it here. But you get what you pay for. I mean, look at the place. Up here, they might pay about $2.5 million for places like these. A lot of these mountaintop homes are hidden away behind gates or tucked away on a hillside. 
That's to keep people like you and I out. But from what I can see, they're all very nice. A lot of these homes have views of the ocean, which is a very wonderful thing to think about. Seeing the ocean from your veranda and all. You just got to look out for wildfires. Most of the really, really expensive homes are down here along the water. I think the highest priced places in Santa Barbara are close to 15 million. And some of these are second homes. <laughs> yeah, you can't live here unless you're pretty loaded. The population really hasn't gone up here since the area got all filled in. Santa Barbara's kind of wedged between the mountains and the ocean, so there's not a lot of room to build here anymore. Oh, I mean, people want to build here, but only the ultra wealthy can actually come up with the dough and influence to stick a new mansion up along the city's hillsides. Santa Barbara's middle class is suffering the most. A lot of the people who grew up here can barely afford to live here anymore. It's not an easy place for a young family to raise kids. And a lot of the college kids can't afford rent either. Seems like a lot of the people you see around town are either college kids or old, rich, white people. Whoever's running Santa Barbara doesn't really seem to give a shit about the unaffordability. Walking around downtown, you see the signs of change. Literally. Lots of smaller mom and pops are closed down now because they can't afford the rising leases. The city brought in lots of new fancy shopping into town, and that's taken away the whole hippie, close-knit vibe that kind of defined the place forever. Today, it's just too hard for the creative types to be able to open up little music and artsy places anymore. It's like they're trying to turn Santa Barbara into Rodeo Drive or something, catering to all the wealthy tourists and elite instead of the long-timers. It seems they definitely don't want the quote-unquote wrong kind of people moving into town. Did you know most of the people who work in Santa Barbara have to commute here? Yeah, I'm happy. All the regular people, healthcare workers, teachers, cooks, gardeners, they can't afford it here anymore. And what's funny about that is all the rich liberals that live here, they complain about the environment all the time, but their own hired help is adding a lot of carbon to the air. Maybe they should buy their workers Teslas. <laughs> Maybe they should, but they won't do that. Now we're going to look at where the average people live. Here's what that looks like. A bunch of modest, overpriced homes. You'll notice driving around that much of the housing stock has a Spanish style to it. Lots of tan homes with clay roofs. Stuff around here is in the $1.2 million range. Very nice, clean neighborhoods, wouldn't you say? I think these people are lucky to be able to live here. But I have to say, the roads here are terrible. You can't go five feet in your Subaru or Tesla without hitting a pothole or a bad part of the road. What the hell, people? I'm sure they have the money to fix <laughs> Maybe their they streets. Should. And by the way, driving around, I saw more Black Lives Matter signs here than anywhere else in the state. Interesting. The job scene here isn't going to wow you or anything. Lots of people here are retired. There's some hospital jobs and some teaching jobs, and the university has a lot of opportunities. I'm sure you could find a way to volunteer to save the whales, if that's your thing. This is East Santa Barbara. Every city has to have a bad side. This is their bad side, if you were going to define bad as being the cheapest neighborhoods with the most crime. But come on now, this isn't that bad. It's just older. A home here is still pushing eight or 900K. <laughs> I know. I don't know who lives in these homes, but again, it's all very nice for a cheap side of town. The housing market's overstimulated here, so even the homes on the cheap side of town are out of hand. And you have all these investors coming in here and buying up these cheaper homes and flipping them. Probably gonna be overpriced Airbnbs one day. That's my guess. It's not that dangerous here, really. Crime here is about average for California. There's about 12 murders a year here for a city of 90,000 people. There's little wannabe gangsters here. Although if you talk to long timers, they'll complain that crime's going up. If there's gonna be any signs of blight, it's gonna be on the east side of town. That includes homelessness, which is getting worse, just like you would think. I mean, this is California. 
Driving around, you'll see little tent encampments sprouting up in a few pockets of town. Nothing like what you'd find in a big city, but it's clearly a thing. And I'm going to guess that just about all these people aren't from here. You know, people who were priced out of their homes. I'm assuming that a lot of these people wound up here from other places. Probably from the L.A. area. Here they can spread out and not live in as much filth. Go down near the water and you'll see a lot of homeless people on the sand or in the nearby parks. Sometimes it's hard to tell who's a local hippie and who's a bust-in junkie from L.A. I tried to talk with some of them. They were all very hard to communicate with. Hey, Negro, I don't give a fuck you were in debt. Fuck, what is the point? How long have you been in Santa Barbara? Really long. And you say, oh, saved my life today. I did? Yeah. Why? Because I don't know. I'd say Saturday. Saturday? Yeah. <gasps> the day I got bumped my elbow and got spidey powers. Now, I swear it might be a coincidence but I think people were playing piano for the homeless folks on purpose. I walked around downtown and saw a few signs of homelessness, but it wasn't overwhelming or anything. I didn't see any poop and pee on sidewalks. I'll bet the snobby rich people who live here hate this though. Next door in Montecito, they would never let this happen. No way. Montecito is sort of Santa Barbara, sort of not. You could call it Santa Barbara's Beverly Hills. If Santa Barbara is exclusive, Montecito is exclusive. You want to impress somebody? Tell them you live in Montecito. I could tell by the types of cars driving around here that the people who live in Montecito think they are very important. I saw lots of SUVs with tinted windows and a professional driver. My God. I'm going to bet a lot of the moms here only take their fancy cars out to drop the kids off, grab lunch, and then pick their kids up after school. Liberal elites indeed. But they're not causing any trouble, I guess. Good for them. Montecito was where all the big time celebs live. Oprah, Ariana Grande, Adam Levine. Ellen, even Prince Harry bought a home here. I hear you'll see him driving around sometimes. Ooh, so fancy. Right now we're in Coast Village in Montecito, just a couple miles from downtown Santa Barbara. It's full of everything you think it would have. Stuff rich people do. Montecito is actually the priciest community in the country that's not an actual city. The average home here is worth like six million bucks. I know. If you drive around Montecito's fancy areas, you can't really see a lot of the homes. Stay out. No looking inside. You can only see me when I want you to see me. I think the bigger and more elaborate your gate is here, the more important you are. Some gates are regular gates. Some look like they should be in Gates Illustrated. Gates are a very fancy way to flex. This is the gate to Oprah's $100 million house, in case you care. I'm going to assume her neighbors brag about living on Oprah's street. Here's what her estate looks like from above. Very impressive, I have to say. On the flip side right now, we're in the poor part of Montecito, where homes are only $2.3 million. I guess that's a deal then, right? I wonder if these people here feel poor or if they feel smart to not have paid many more millions for their homes. I think there's two classes of people in Montecito, the ultra mega wealthy and the really rich. That's it. It's a very different world up here, I'll tell you that. And for some reason it feels 10 degrees cooler here than it does next door in Santa Barbara. No homeless people in Montecito parks. No way. Driving around, I found what might have been a short-lived homeless camp. Looks like some neighbors were on it. Gotta get this stuff cleaned up. Good for you guys.
If I lived here, I wouldn't put up with that crap either. And I would join the school board and have a big boat. Or maybe you could join the school board and then donate all that money to the schools instead of buying a big boat. Yeah, I didn't think so. There's other cool parts of Santa Barbara. You could spend a whole weekend here and check everything out. You see Santa Barbara is about 15 minutes up the coast from downtown and there's lots of bars and younger stuff to do up that away. Everyone's heard of Isla Vista. That's the rundown part near campus where the college kids live and party all day. Isla Vista is really going downhill lately. I heard from a former student that there's a lot more trash on the beach these days. Uh-oh, that sucks. While I was in Santa Barbara, I did a lot. I already showed you some shots from the marina. This is a really neat place to grab a bite to eat or get your boats ready to go out for a big adventure. I saw a lot of people leaving this marina to go sailing or kayaking in the evening. They are very lucky to be able to do that. I spent some time on Stern's Wharf. You can drive on the wharf and grab a bite to eat or just sit out there and look out over the water. If I lived here, I'd be out here all the time. I ate at Longboards, but again, I forgot to take a picture of my damn salad until it was gone. Sorry, I was hungry. I hadn't had anything to eat since the Del Taco I got that morning. I went to Whiskey Roberts downtown, which has an awesome bathroom. Now that's old Santa Barbara people. That's how it used to be here, but places like this are hard to come by here anymore. Downtown Santa Barbara is a very pleasant place to spend the evenings. You don't really get a grasp of how healthy people are until you walk around downtown. You don't see anybody down here out of shape. A lot of people jog or walk, but the newest thing are these e-bikes. It used to be in Santa Barbara, if you wanted to flex, you had your fixed gear bike that cost 5k. Now fixies are out of favor. Everybody's zipping around on these expensive e-bikes. Tabor works at Electric Bikes of Santa Barbara. He told me that a lot of these e-bikes are $7,000 and a lot of people use them to climb the local hillsides. People that normally couldn't climb mountains, AKA beer drinkers. So the hipsters now have e-bikes apparently. Most of downtown Santa Barbara does indeed feel very exclusive. A lot of the shops and stores have things that cater to those with deep pockets. Fancy places to get bread, fancy places to get rugs, fancy places to get Italian pottery. It's definitely way more corporate here now. And a lot of the super fancy stores were completely empty. Huh? Wonder why? And for the night, I stayed at the Secret Garden Inn and Cottages. That was neat. Really cool little bed and breakfast type place. And look at that breakfast. The woman that owns the place is French. Her cat seemed to like me. Her name is Peanut. <coughs> Santa Barbara is still one of the best places to live in California. And most of the people here live in a bubble. It's too bad though. A lot of the shots here are called by the rich and entitled who were clearly out of touch with the rest of the community. A lot of town feels very exclusive, showy, and sometimes arrogant. It's been taken over by tourism and it's being invaded by the homeless. <laughs> so I guess you could say it's becoming more and more like the rest of the state all the time. Too bad, cause it's not the same place it once was, not even just a few years ago. And that is a damn shame. So right now we are talking to Scott Walters, who was born and raised in Santa Barbara. And he's also a licensed real estate agent there in Santa Barbara. So he knows the area very well. Scott, how are you? I'm good, Nick. I'm really excited to be on your show. I'm a huge, huge fan. <laughs> Thank you. So yeah, I spent a couple days in Santa Barbara uh, when I was there out in the California trip. And it was a welcome relief to a lot of the other places that I went to in the state where it was all about weird and tragic and homeless and dirty. And I come into Santa Barbara on a bright Tuesday afternoon. And I'm like, this is actually very nice. Um, there are very few times that I actually enjoy traveling because usually I go to bad places. But this was an opportunity to show everybody a really good place for once. Um, Santa Barbara is a lovely place. 
Um, tell me, uh, first of all, um, how sadly it looked to me and after talking to a few people, it seems like it's turning into California more and more there. Um, is, is that true? Oh, yeah, absolutely. So with Santa Barbara, like I said, I was born and raised. So as a kid growing up here, I graduated high school in the late 80s. When we moved here and I was a kid, it was a sleepy little town, right? Just a little beach community, almost like a fishing town, right? And it slowly and slowly turned into a massive tourist trap. You got Oprah here, the Royals, Travolta. I mean, you name it, every celebrity in town. But it really exploded in Santa Barbara when Ronald Reagan became president in the 80s. Um, it really put us on the map. You know, we got Reagan's ranch here. And uh, yeah, I think really that was probably when it it started to completely explode uh, here in Santa Barbara. Yeah, and it, the, the cost of living is through the roof. Um, you get what you pay for. It's a wonderful place to be. But I can, so I can imagine why it's so expensive to live there. But you've got um, a, a little bit of a growing homeless problem there. It's getting corporate. It. it, it um, are, are people in Santa Barbara, like, worried that the place is changing too much? Well, I, yeah, of course. Like, you always see that with cities like this that start to experience massive growth. The people that have been here for a while don't like it. They, they don't like it, right? It, it's just any city in America. But this is a coastal community, and we're seeing, like, cruise liners now, like, park out in our harbor and just offload tourists. It's insanity what we're dealing with. With now, so a lot of people don't particularly enjoy it. As like you said, as a licensed realtor, I even have a, a channel where I talk about the potential housing bubble and crash that's around the corner. Now, like you said, Santa Barbara and places like this are a little bit insulated from that because there's so much money and some tourist trap. But we're we're I always say we're recession insulated, but we're not recession proof. I mean, we could get hit in this thing too. So we'll behave a little bit differently. We'll be the last of the party the first to maybe jump out of it but we we could get hit in this but yeah to answer your question um a lot of people don't ex necessarily enjoy the fact that we've be become some tourist trap we feel like la you know there's bumper stickers all over in santa barbara la go home you know like we don't want la in santa barbara but unfortunately it's here and with that you'll get some of the homeless population a lot of money here great to panhandle you know, a lot of people that panhandle from here. So, yeah, I mean, we're experiencing all that stuff. And the city's so small. I just don't know if it can can handle how much of that it can handle before it starts to experience some blowback from that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the cost of living. I mean, I, it, it seems like young families, the middle class really can't survive there um, anymore. I talk to people who work in the downtown area. Their rents are going through the roof. They're having to share, you know, three bedroom uh, houses and they're all trying to cram in there. And even that's becoming almost untenable for some of them. A lot of them are talking about leaving. They're like, this place is just for rich people now. Um, is that true? I mean, can middle class people move there and try to exist? Yeah, it's it's super tricky, like you said. So, you know, I'm I'm actually I work in real estate and I'm a landlord. I have multi uh, tenant building here. And so uh, affordable rentals are always in demand everywhere, but especially in places like Santa Barbara. So for me, you know, I always find out who my competition is and I beat them, you know, keep my tenants put. I don't price gouge them, but we're seeing a lot of people price gouge their tenants and they can't afford it anymore. Now the reverse course has happened with the economy and we're starting to see some softening in real estate values and that'll trickle into the rental market. But here in Santa Barbara, like you said, the median home price here, Nick, is a million dollars like who can have you know not many people can afford that so it just caters to the wealthy and you know it's really unfair because that wasn't always the case here in santa barbara we had opportunity for everybody and you need people the working class people in any city to be able to sustain its local economy so as you price those people out they're going to be living on top of each other doing whatever they can to survive and yeah i mean you're absolutely right you nailed it that's in fact what we're what we're dealing with now in santa barbara yeah 
I the homeless thing is a, is a thing there. Not nearly as bad as a lot of the other places I went to. Uh, people in town were getting a little. They seemed like they were kind of frustrated. I saw little communities that were. Again, I think the people in Santa Barbara live in a bubble where they're like, oh, my God, there's like three people over there. There used to be nobody over there. Um, but it is growing. I saw a lot of people down by the park and the ocean and kind of lingering around the east side of town. When did that start and why? How did you finally become the next target for the homeless people? Oh, man, that is a great question. I'm about to blow the lid off of this one. So when I was a kid, there was maybe like one town homeless guy that you saw cruising around town, right? That was it. Like one dude, you know? And then so now what's happened is because there's so much wealth here. And so what we do now is try to accommodate the homeless community. We've got two big homeless shelters, right? Offering services. But most homeless people don't want those services because they don't want to be told what to do. You know, they want to be out on the beach doing their thing. And so what we've done, what we're experiencing now, because L.A. has the biggest homeless population in the nation. California has the biggest homeless homeless population in the nation. So what because we have facilities now to cater with some homeless uh, to, to the homeless, I'm seeing buses from L.A. drive their homeless up here and dump them on our doorstep because we have services available to them. So it's insane. We're just bussing them in and it's exploding. It's absolutely exploding. And so that's kind of for me, it's like a double edged sword is when you provide these services and cater to them, you're not incentivizing them to get off the streets you're inviting it actually you're 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 now part of the problem instead of the solution in many many cases nick that's yeah going. that's frustrating I, san diego is dealing with it on a huge level i know there's this thing where they bust people back and forth it's called greyhound therapy and they're like hey we don't care where you go <laughs> just just get out of here um it was just a matter of time before they found you there and i think the more you give them the more you're gonna better gonna come um I, i'd be frustrated if i was there um to be honest because most of the people i saw did not look like they had been out priced of their home that had been oh I, I you know my rent's too much now i used to live here born and raised there's a few of those kind of hippie bummy kind of people around town that you know born and raised they just want to live that lifestyle but for the most part, a lot of people I saw did not look like they had just recently had a setback. They looked like it was a lifetime commitment to it. So, Yeah, for sure. No, you're absolutely right. And uh, a lot of these Southern California beach areas, you know, the climate's so good here in California. You know, we have sunshine almost 300 days a year. And these coastal communities are, are just, you know, really good, you know, to accommodate that. I just got back from a trip. Uh, you've probably been to Carmel by the mm -hmm. sea, Big Sur, San Simeon. It's, uh, you know, it's more central California along a really rugged coastline. But you see very little homeless in those areas. For one, they don't offer huge outreach programs for them. For two, the weather isn't quite as accommodating, I think, for that. Um, but we, I think the crisis really delivered the knockout blow um, as people had a complete rug pull. We made it feel like, oh, we're just going to send free money to everybody and, and you can camp wherever you want. And I think that's what we saw in the crisis because they wanted people to shelter in place. So we saw these, these camps just everywhere. But now we're starting to disperse them. Well, they have to go somewhere. So they're back hiding between, you know, in between the cracks of society again. And, and you know, you see it all the time, Nick, because you get out and about and cover the whole country, living in cars, parking lots, camp encampments, and the cost of living getting so great. We're just now seeing more people being unable to sustain their cost of living, especially in areas like Santa Barbara, where it's become so expensive, you, I mean, it's insane. So you're one hiccup away from living in your car and eventually a tent if you're not careful in this thing. Mm -hmm. So people I talk to downtown um, that have been there for a while um, are frustrated by the corporatization of Santa Barbara. They're like, they're trying to turn this place into like Rodeo Drive with all the new fancy this and that, catering to the rich people and the tourists at the expense of the people that have been here forever. 
Um, is that is that true? Have you heard people talk about that? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's exactly what we've turned in is to is Santa Barbara is now the Rodeo Drive by the sea. And so there's a big challenge with that because the, the economic fundamentals aren't there to to really support that. And so a lot of people are upset because they're like this corporate America, a lot of these big companies just trying to come in and capitalize on everything. Now, retail was already in trouble prior to the crisis. The crisis was the nail in the coffin to retail because of, you know, online like Amazon has already taken a huge bite out of brick and mortar retail stores. And as a, as a real estate professional who works in and around the city, you know, I already saw a lot of rents just got astronomical. So mom and pop businesses were already in massive trouble. So now what we're seeing is corporate America. So a lot of the people that are upset about, like you said, corporate America entering into the city and, and, and now taking that small town feel away from it. Even corporate America we're now seeing are doing massive layoffs. This, they could no longer sustain themselves and we, as we enter into a recession. So I'm seeing more and more empties, meaning empty stores and even big entities, massive corporations, Panera Bread, gone, Sears and Roebuck, gone. Macy's gone. I mean, there's just all these big companies now running for the exit. So we're about to have what I believe is a, hopefully at minimum a small, possibly a big reset where rents will have to come back down because they got to levels that were unsustainable. So to answer your question, yes, people aren't happy about corporate America taking over this small city. But B, the silver lining might be, it looks like we might not be able to sustain a corporate America level of, uh, you know, cost to, to, to do business here to where it might actually, you know, uh, reset a little bit. Good. Because, you know, it's a, it's a funky, it's always been a funky town. I know stuff changes. I don't want to sound like my grandpa back in the old days. We used to have one horse town, but you know, Santa Barbara was always different and unique and it was always funky and alternative and, and, and to become the Palm Springs or the Rodeo drive of, of, of the, of that part of the state, it would, would suck because it, you know, or most of the people don't have the ability or the need or the want to go and shop. They want to go and experience Santa Barbara, the old, old Santa Barbara. That's what I'm calling for. Totally, dude. I totally agree with you 100 percent. That's what definitely would be nice if we could get back to that. And I wouldn't rule anything out. I think you might see some resetting here in Santa Barbara and other cities like us. And I think it's really, really needed, Nick. Yeah, it totally is needed. The whole state needs a damn reset. Like a, <laughs> a, a reboot, just unplug it and plug it back in and start over. The state has lost its way and um, a lot of people are leaving and they just can't afford it or they don't want to put up with all the BS that's going on. Um, I think that they've kind of learned some lessons and they're kind of pivoting a little bit on some of the big stuff that they're trying to do with the homeless population, and the crime a little bit. Um, because they need to, because parts of California seem lawless. Now, Santa Barbara does not. And I know that we've spent 15 minutes talking about negative stuff. I, I do want to, to talk about how lovely it is there. Not only is it beautiful there, it's so, just so peaceful and has a nice vibe. Um, what is it like to, to, to live there and spend every day in Santa Barbara? Well, that, you, you hit the nail on the head. Santa Barbara is awesome or I'd be gone. I'd be gone out of the state, like you said. Santa Barbara is absolutely awesome. I mean, you can be in the I, I'm in the mountains, mountain biking, riding my motorcycle, hiking, and I could be down at the beach with my toes in the sand within ten minutes. It's like this crazy coastal community where you get, you're at the coast, but you have the mountains right there, so you have the best of both worlds. I think worlds. I think as the crow flies, maybe it's like five miles from a mountain peak to the ocean. So it's pretty, it's pretty awesome. And Santa Barbara is, it's a pretty, we got about a hundred thousand people here. So it's actually a pretty decent amount of people, but you, you can get around the city pretty easily. And, you know, it's just got so much to offer. It, it's beauty is undeniable. It is just insane. So for me, like, and like you talked about, many people are willing to sacrifice, you know, maybe cr like, you know, housing to live in a place like this. For me, I've always said I'd rather be happy making less money than miserable 
making more. It comes down to quality of life. So, I mean, if you got to sacrifice quality of life to live in paradise, you know, some people are willing to do that. That's why people will continue to do whatever it takes to live in a city like this. But yeah, surfing, mountain biking, you know, hiking, you, you have it all here. And, um, so it's it's still an incredibly neat place. It's just our downtown area, State Street, the harbor, very touristy now. But the locals know where to navigate around that and some of these smaller beaches where they're still kind of have more of a local feel. Um, so, yeah, I mean, Santa Barbara is awesome. As somebody that's been born and raised here. I've seen it change a lot, you know, Um, and as a kid, we had skate parks, arcades. I mean, it was awesome. And now it's just, you know, like you said, a lot of corporate Starbucks and, you know, whatever big chain stores and Costco and cookie cutter environment. But there's still a lot of character in Santa Barbara. I think it's one of the most beautiful places in the world, undeniably, no denying that. It now just becomes, you know, how much do you want to live in paradise? Are you willing to sacrifice to enjoy paradise? Um, and so a lot of people are like, no, I, I don't think I am. You know, I'm not going to, you know, live in a tent to sacrifice to live in, in Well, many Santa people Barbara. do. Well, I know, actually, you're right. So many people do, but it's, it's only because... You know, that's just the nature of anywhere like this. You know, it's going to tr- – where's the best place to panhandle? People have money. Well, you, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, this is a great place to do that. But, yeah, you're right. So a lot of people do. Well, it is a lovely place, and uh, it's easy to, to poke fun at – the Montecito and Santa Barbara and the exclusive and, and the, the posh, but also how fancy and, and nice and everything. It's, it's easy to be like, Oh my God, look at this place is just so perfect. But it really is um, a breath of fresh air for California. It, it is a really lovely place to be um, not only to visit, but to, if you could afford to live there. And, and it's good to see that, you know, there's some parts of California that are still holding on. Santa Barbara is one of the most beautiful places on earth. So it's no shock that it's become a little bit of a destination city. And a lot of people have flocked here for good reason. The place is absolutely amazing. I love and enjoy living and working in Santa Barbara. I wouldn't have it any other way. I absolutely love it. That's why I'm still here. So I really appreciate you taking a look at Santa Barbara. And I hope everybody enjoyed this episode on Santa Barbara. If you guys ever need any help, feel free to reach out to me. Man, I feel like it, it, there's like a co-host there. <laughs> I know, dude. I told you, man. I told you, you. I'm a job. sales guy. Thank you. How long have you been out here? Oh, a couple moments. Precious moments. Precious moments. What's your name? Looking for bait. That's your name? The bait. I'm looking for uh, Judge Judy's uh, 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 typist Mm -hmm. because I wonder what she's up to my mom mom loves Judge Judy I love Judge Judy no my mom loves her the best yeah no she does all right well because even a even one's own parents will sue their child for a hundred dollars and so if Judge Judy was alive I'd want her to like Tell my mother in spirit the difference between a civil and a criminal case for a hundred dollars. <laughs> okay. Cause she loves Judge. I love Judge. I think I really love Judge. But I really love her because. Are you homeless? So far. Do you like being homeless? Sometimes, yeah. No, no. Cause I have a real estate idea. What's that? It's based upon uh, natural foliage. I think people's houses are existentially falling apart. That's right. Non theories. Are you looking to move and need advice? I do consulting. That's right. I'll sit down and talk about where the next perfect place for you and your family should be. I do it all the time. Together, let's find you a new home that's safe and checks all your boxes. And I can also help you find your new house too. Email me and I'll work with you. I'm not just helping you figure out where to move, but I can help you find your perfect home too. That's right. 
I know awesome, reliable agents all over the country, and I'd love to connect you to somebody who can help you search for that perfect home. Hey guys, if you learned something new about America or what it's like to live in America, great! You should think about subscribing and turning on your notifications. You can also click one of these videos or playlists for more. This is Sage Nick's manager. This has been a Corner House Entertainment production.